Hello. Welcome to the ORVSD's training for Photos in the Classroom. My name is Laura Nickerson, and today we're going to learn how to use Picasa. Before we begin, I want to make sure that everyone has Picasa already downloaded onto their computer. If you're not sure where to get it, you can just go to picasa.google.com or do a search for Picasa, and it's probably the first one that comes up. It's a free download, so um, I'd encourage you to get it on your computer or any computers your students use, and um, we're going to show you how to use it today. While you're getting that downloaded, I'd like to talk a little bit about what Picasa is. Picasa has two parts. There's an actual program that's on your computer. It's going to have a symbol that kind of looks like a color wheel. And there's also um, Picasa Web Albums Online, which offers you free, shareable storage and backup for your photos and videos. Um, we're going to focus mostly on the desktop version, and then I'll show you a little bit of the web albums um, as we get to the end. So now that you've got Picasa downloaded on your computer, I'd also like you to um, be able to follow along with the training today. So the first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to my website, because that's where I keep my training materials. So to get to my website, uh, whatever browser you're in, excuse me, get that typed right, we want to go to um, a bit.ly address just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to remember. Um, and the address is bit.ly.nickll. That's going to take you right to my um, website. <clears throat> Oops, I just closed about 90 pages that I had open. There we go. Um, and uh, this is the uh, home page uh, for my website. There we go. This is the home page for my uh, website. And again, the address was uh, bit.ly backslash Nick LL for Nickerson, Laura Lee, my name. Um, this is the actual website I use in my classroom. And um, I also use it as a training um, access for teachers. Um, here's some Picasso web albums right here. You'll learn how to do those a little bit later. But for right now, on that page, please open up the teacher check button on the side here and go to the ORVSD link. This is where I keep my um, training materials for um, these sessions and also um, give you a handout. So down here at the bottom, you'll see photos in the classroom. Um, here's a link to the video that'll be up in a minute, a uh, link to the handout. And then once you complete this training, don't forget to print yourself off a PDU form and um, complete some feedback for the training so that I can make it better. So I'm going to open up that link <clears throat> so you can take a look. This is the um, handout that I used in class. You're welcome to use this, share it, print it. Um, do whatever you'd like with it. And we're just going to kind of follow through this handout. So um, I'll give you a second to get that up on your screen. Um, and maybe you bookmark it or print it or um, send it to your uh, anything that you'd like to <laughs> take a look at and hang on to it for later. All right, let's head back onto my desktop here. And you've got um, Picasa installed, and let's open it up. The first time you open up Picasa, um, it's going to ask to want to scan your computer. It's going to ask for all kinds of questions. I would just go ahead and hit the yes, 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 and go ahead and on through it. Picasa does a pretty good job of setting itself up. What Picasa really is, is an organizer. So um, it's going to search your computer, wherever you tell it to search, for any pictures or videos that you've saved anywhere on your computer. It's amazing when it does that first search, uh, all the photos that you've forgotten you ever saved on your computer. So uh, mine's already searched my computer. It opens it up, and I'm going to talk a little bit first about this desktop window so that we have the same vocabulary when um, we're surfing around it. So the first thing we have is the pull-down settings at the top here. Um, a lot of them are the same type of pull-down settings you see in other um, systems. One of the most important buttons in the pull-down setting is the folder manager. So keep that in mind. We'll be back to that in a second. We also have the navigation over here on the left. Picasso will organize your photos and videos lots of different ways. So you can find a way that's going to work best for you and make it the most efficient for your classroom or home. Um, mine is usually open to the folders for you because I like to save my pictures in folders and I try to organize myself that way. But you might uh, want to do yours in al albums or um, maybe just sort it by people. It has great face recognition so you can quickly find pictures of the people you're looking for. And the main area here is the viewing area. And you can see I've preloaded some photos in for this training session today. Um, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger so they're a little bit easier to see um, on the video. And um, it has a tray attached to it at the bottom. This is where we're going to put photos in. And actually, when you hear me say pin them, I'm talking about this little post-it pin down here. And that holds pictures from our viewing area in the tray to be used for different projects or to um, organize. Then we have all the fun buttons down here at the bottom that we're going to learn how to use today to get the most out of your um, 
Picasa experience. I can call these usually additional tools. So that kind of gives you the uh, training of the desktop area. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some basic setup and um, some basic practice. So I'm on the quick practice section of the um, training handout that you're maybe looking at at the same time. Um, we save pictures all over the place, uh, but probably we want to tell our computer, as always, don't let the computer be the boss of you, tell your computer where you want it to look. So under tools, under folder manager, this is something that you or if your students use this, you need to set up right from the beginning. I'm on my home computer today, so I don't have that many um, different folders or drives on my computer. If I was doing this at school, I'd have multiple drives shared by teachers and staff, and I would really need to go in there and select the drives that I would like to be scanned. Right now, I have my pictures set up as scan always, but maybe I have some uh, things stored in some other places. I would, all, I would need to do is find that folder, select it, and then I can set it up to scan once. That would be just today. It won't look in there ever again. Or I could set it up to scan always. And in this case, it looks there every time that my computer is turned on and I open up the Picasso program. I don't know what this folder is, so I'm going to turn it off. So if you make a mistake, it's really easy just to turn it off. But only select the folders that you want to pull in because it's also going to pull in uh, clip art and a lot of other things that are found maybe in some other folders. I'm all the way done. I'm going to set OK. Um, looking through the folders here on the left, let's take a little bit closer look at the navigation area. Albums at the top are um, <clears throat> some preset albums that maybe you would like to put things into some collections. It always has recently up data so you can see your most recent photos that you put on your uh, computer. And then maybe even some special albums you put together or collections of photos you've taken over the years. People, great addition. This is a new thing for Picasa and it photo recognizes and searches your computer for faces that are similar. So these are pictures of my daughter and it even goes back to when she was a baby. Looks for the distance between the eyes. Um, I think it also looks for nose placement and ear placement and it's gonna pull them all through. So you can choose to use this if you're really looking at faces a lot or I don't use this one so much but it's a nice thing to have if I want a picture of like my kids or a particular student, I can just pull it up on my people. Projects, we'll get to those in a second, but there's lots of great projects you can make with Google. And if you're trying to find one of the projects you made, you might want to look here first, because it'll be easiest to find them. And then and finally, we get to your photos, your folders. If you've done a good job of organizing your pictures on your computer, when you load them from the camera or download them off the internet, you probably are putting them in the folders. That's a good thing. So Picasso scans your computers for all the pictures, and it recognizes folders that you've put them in, organizes them alphabetically, in the year that your camera stamp said you took this picture. So you can see if you go back in time, I've been using Picasso for a while. Not this long ago, but my pictures were stamped that date, and so it recognizes that's the date that we added them onto um, the computer. Finally, at the very bottom, <clears throat> we've got a couple more um, selections. So we've got rub albums. <clears throat> which are going to be things that you can load up to the internet, and then anything you've exported. And I don't export that many things, but if I make something in Picasso that I want to export, this is where it's going to show up. So again, let's go back to those folders. That's what we're going to be using uh, the most today. And I'm going to go into that um, Google training folder, because those are the pictures I'm going to be using. Um, let's practice selecting and pinning some photos to the tray. Um, the easiest way is to uh, just click on a photo and you'll see it's got a blue outline and you'll also see that it's been added to your tray down here at the bottom. So by putting a pin in it here, you'll notice that um, my pin has um, set up at the top here. I'm going to pause for a second because my computer's messed up a little. Hey, there we go. Uh, my computer wanted to update on me. <laughs> Not a good time. So I can select one photo at a time if you'd like to and put pins through them. Or I can also use my mouse and drag through photos to select multiple ones at a time and put pins through them. Or I can also, um, let's see, I'm going to clear my tray. Yes, I'm going to clear it all out. Or I can use um, the common keyboard shortcuts of control or shift. Control to select uh, individual photos that are scattered. Or <clears throat> the shift key to select the first photo, holding it down, and then selecting the last photo. Okay. So um, that's how you're going to be able to select photos and then pin them into the tray. Also, everybody takes bad photos. It doesn't matter who you are. And, and so you are probably want to look for just your good photos. One of the great things about Picasa is you can star your photos. So like, I think this is a good picture. So <clears throat> I might want to add a star to that picture. 
I'm going to add a star into that picture. Notice it right there. It doesn't actually change the picture. But now, when I um, do a look or a search or a filter, I can look at just my starred pictures. There it is right there. I see my starred pictures out of this folder. I can also go back and look at um, all my pictures again quite easily. And um, starting is a great way to just find your best pictures without sorting through thousands of pictures as you're going through um, all the photos you've taken onto your um, uh, computer. So um, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And um, we are now going to move on to the second page in our training, which is um, editing your photographs. So the first thing we're going to do is click on a photograph to start editing. I'm going to double click on this photograph. First big problem, it's rotated the wrong way. Um, down here at the bottom, I can rotate in this view, or I can head back to my library, and I can also always rotate in this view as well. Now keep in mind, um, it, it rotated everything in my tray. It'll do those actions to everything in my tray. So I'm going to bring those back and go, hold on. I don't want to do that. I'm going to go in and just do this one because I have all this in my tray pinned. So I'm going to rotate just this one here. Um, it doesn't actually change this picture. This picture on my file is still vertical. All it does is remember the changes that I do to the photographs and apply them in the Picasso viewer. So it's a great way to make edits to your photos without damaging the original photos. So like I said, all the changes I make to any of these photo edits, it's not going to actually change the original photo. Picasso is just going to remember the edits that we made. So here I've got um, our annual staff barbecue at our Crestown Rival football game, and I finally got it facing the right way. So one of the things that I do most with my photos is crop. Um, cropping is a great way to make a better photo. Well, if I go from here to the left, under my three different types of edits, under basic physics, the first one, there it is, crop. I can do lots of different crops. Picasso will select some crops for me if I want to print or I want to make a special project like a CD cover. I usually choose manual crop because I want to decide what I want to crop and not crop. So I definitely want to get this extra arm out of here. I'm just going to set up kind of a nice crop here. I can adjust it around. Looks pretty good. I got the barbecue. I got the guy. And I'm going to apply it. Now later on, even months, if I come back to this photo and open it up, I can still hit this undo crop button and go back to my full screen. It just remembers what I did. It doesn't change the actual photograph. Okay. To maneuver through this screen, you'll notice that I still see my tray. I still see all the special buttons. But up here, I've kind of got a photo navigator so that I can quickly go from one photo to the next. So now that I feel pretty good about what I've done with this photo, let's head on to the next one. <clears throat> I think this photo is pretty well cropped, but I might want to do some um, special effects to this photo. So let me head into the tuning button. Um, it has a great some slides to change the different highlights, shadows, um, color temperature if it's warmer or cooler that you, you want to make it. Um, and um, I don't see a whole lot of color changes I want to make, so let me head to effects. Some photos, um, it's great to change up the color scheme, to give them an older look or a focal look. These are just some basic photo edits, edits that you might see, um, like similar to Photoshop, um, that are just going to quickly be applied. Again, it didn't change your photo. It just remembers what you did to it. So I can undo any of those steps I want to and go back to my full color. I'm going to go back to basic fixes, and I'm going to show you my favorite button. It's the I'm feeling lucky button. I do not know a lot about cameras. A lot of people don't. We're teachers. We don't have time for that. So let the computer do the work for you. When I click the I'm feeling lucky button, it automatically analyzes the picture and makes slight changes in it to make a better picture. Now this one, I can't see as much as what it's done. Let's head to the next picture and try the same button. This is a picture I took with my son. It's really washed out of the top. You can't see many of the features, and it's overpowered by this blue. So we're going to make two quick edits to make this better. First, I'm feeling lucky. It adds a lot of shading in up here. Maybe you can't see it quite yet, but I'm going to go into my tuning, and I'm also going to add some shadows. Now I can see even more definition. Now I'm going to go into my effects, and I'm going to add one more thing that I think would be a nice touch to this photograph. I'm going to do a focal black and white, and I'm going to choose the area that I'm going to keep into color. I can change the size and sharpness of it. Now the focal point clearly is my sun at the top, and I've created a nice color contrast. Even using photos in your room, you want them to be nice photos. And you don't have to be the best photographer to produce quality photos that um, tell a good story about things that are going on in your room or your students. So moving on, I'm going to go ahead and apply this and move on to my next picture. Here's a picture of my shed. 
This is clearly a really dark picture. I took it because I'm trying to sell my shed. Let's see what I'm feeling like it does for this. Wow, now people can actually see it and maybe I'll get rid of this thing. I did, I had to give it away for free, but at least it's out of the backyard. Okay, moving on to the next picture. Here we have another one that's dark, the I'm feeling lucky button, and I perhaps want to maybe add in even some more light so we can see some of the features of this, of this photograph. Take a minute, choose a couple of your photos, and really use some of these different tools. It's nice if you do know a lot about photography, that you've got your histogram and camera information, so if you know how to read that and make adjustments, good for you. I know a little bit about it, but not enough to mention. At any time, if you need to take a closer look, feel free to zoom in and zoom out to your photograph. There's also different um, aspects to make the, the photo fit differently in your window. Uh, you can always rotate it. And when you're all the way done, remember, it's not going to change your pictures. It's just going to save and remember the things that you did for them. I'm going to give you just a second. You might want to pause the video now to try out some of these tools and see how you can quickly change your photos and make them better. So now that you've figured out um, how to move around through the photo editor section, how to do some great changes, maybe straighten your photographs. I take a lot of crooked photographs. That's what happens when you have kids. There we go. All right. Uh, I want to show you one of my favorite ones. I don't use a lot, but it's nice. I used to do this in Photoshop. And it was tricky. It had great results, but not everybody wants to buy Photoshop. I love this photo of my daughter with one of her first fish. Uh, but these two fishing holes over here drive me crazy. So I'm going to do my one of my all second favorite tools from Mikasa, the Retouch button. Retouch is kind of a blend, smudge, and erase. So by changing my brush size, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, I first click on the area of the photograph that I'd like to get rid of. Then I'm going to move my brush, and it's going to fill that in with wherever I select and then click again. So it takes a little bit of time, but after a few clicks here, I'm going to effectively remove these two fishing poles and give myself a photograph that I don't have to worry about fishing, whoops, about uh, those fishing poles in there. Again, not quite as efficient as uh, Photoshop, but for free, I'll take it. Hint, if you have to do any uh, profile pictures of yourself for an account online or something else, do a little touch up and you can take out any wrinkles or pimples or anything else. It's a nice way to take a couple years off. All right, we're going to head back to um, our library here. And at any time we can do that, we can just come on back to the main library and see all of our photographs again. It'll show us where we're at. And now I'd like to show you some of the um, additional tools, these fun tools at the bottom that really make Picasa classroom friendly. Now, so far we just talked about pictures. Let's just talk about now what we're going to use in your classroom. I teach science, high school biology, and anatomy. I like to have my own website. So one of the quick things you can do is, if you need a website header that's custom, make it in Picasa. Get yourself a picture and then use your text tool to add in your text on top. Most website headers measure about 1,000 pixels by maybe 200 pixels tall. So you can crop any photograph to the right size Add text on it, and you've got yourself a website header. That's a great tool. Um, let's go through some of our things at the bottom here real quick. Uh, we do a lot of labs in my class, and I take a lot of photos during the labs. So one of the things that I like to do is while the students are cleaning up, I uh, plug in my camera, and I quickly load the photos onto uh, Picasa. Um, I'm assuming that everyone knows how to bring their own photos in, so I'm not going to go over that because that really varies from camera to camera. So let's get some photos on my tray. Let me clear my tray here real quick, and let's pretend that these are the photos that I brought in from my um, lab that day. I've added them into my tray, and I'm going to click on it. Hit them in. Let's make a collage. Collages can be used for so many things. It's going to load the photos that I had in my tray into a template that I can kind of toss, move, rotate, change the size of any of these photographs. So as I bring those in, and let's pretend again they're my students from class, my students can enter back into my room and see a bunch of their photos displayed kind of at once. It's a great way to get them to clean up quickly. It's a great way to get them talking about their lab they did. And what kid does not like to see their own photograph? They pretend that they don't, but they really, it's thrilling for them to see their pictures on a computer and projection unit and online. 
So here's how you use this collage. Once you've got your pictures in, at any time if you've got a picture you don't want, you can just click on it and remove it out. But maybe there's a picture you did want. Well, you can go over here to the sides. Here's our settings. I can go into my clips, and I can bring in other pictures as well. So I'm going to bring in this picture. Or I can say, well, there's someone back on my uh, library I'd like, so let's get some more. And let me go maybe to a different one, and I'm going to grab, that's a, a video, we don't want a video, but let's grab um, some pictures. Here we go. Let's add that picture in and take it back into my collage, and now I can drop that picture in as well. Moving these around, changing the alignment, if I want them top to bottom, how would I like them to look? I can set them as my background so that I have a picture as my background instead of a plain color. There's lots of different things we can do. Under settings, there's some other choices as well. Um, I can change my page format to fit different screens. I can also add some borders around my pictures. I just select my picture and I can add a border or a shadow border or a Polaroid border. I can also if I don't like it so random and I like things a little bit more neat, I can change the type of collage. Right now, I have selected picture pile. There's lots of different things that I can do here. Maybe I want them to be nice and neat. So I can just set them up in a nice grid. Makes it quick and easy. And I go, oh, maybe that's not what I like. Let's go to something else. Let's go back to my picture pile. Oh, excuse me. There we go, picture pile. And I can just go right back to where, where I was at, OK? Once you get one that you like, so let me move these around so it's kind of got a good design to it. One of the great things about this, besides creating the collage, so um, you can set this as your desktop background. So I'm going to select this real quick here. It's going to create the collage and at the same time go into my computer settings and change the desktop background on my computer. So another, this is another great way. I'm going to close it now so you can see. This is my desktop. I've just made this the background of it. It's a great way to highlight student work quickly, show them that what's important, maybe pick your students of the month and they get to be on your desktop background. It's a great way to just quickly and uh, with a good look get pictures onto your desktop um, and they're organized. Oops, wrong one open. <clears throat> um, if you're looking for some ways that you could use this for projects, um, you might consider how, oh, I should show you here first, that collage now shows up under my project. There it is. So here's some other collages that I've made on my computer. So let me head on down here to my Google folder again. And um, let me show you some other uses for collages. Um, our websites for our sports teams have photos of all of the girls with their names or boys so that um, opposing teams can uh, check stats and vote on all league meetings and so forth. So this could be really tedious if you wanted to put this all together. But instead, we just took the headshots, quickly put them into a grid pattern and a collage, saved it as a collage, and then went back in and treating it like a photo, add the kids' names over the top. Now it's one picture file with the whole team's information on it. Also, in my class, we do a quick unit at the beginning of the year on Creative Commons. That's legally and ethically using media from the internet for student projects. So I give the kids the uh, symbols for the Creative Commons licenses, and they use the collage to organize the symbols, save the collage, and then again, treating it like a picture, go back in and add the um, words on top. So it's a great way for them to make a poster as well for a class project that they have photos, or even for photos that they bring, download off the internet, save to a file on their computer, they can organize those and then add words in, and it's saved as one JPEG file, which is really handy and for turning in and it doesn't take up much space. So I just wanted to show you some quick and creative uses for collages. Let's head back to our library. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to make a movie. Um, again, I've got some selected in my tray. I'm going to clear those out. And I have put some special files in here. You'll notice that these little markers here indicate this is a movie file, not just a picture file. Uh, Picasa also searches your computer for all video, which is great. It's a great way to organize your video. So here I have some pictures, still pictures, and video clips from a recent field trip that my anatomy class took to um, OMSI up in Portland. I'm going to use my uh, keyboard shortcut, select my first one, use my shift button to select my last one, and I've got them all in my tray, video and pictures. Let's pin them in and let's go select the movie button. Now, I love movies, and I'm a big uh, believer in Movie Maker, but Movie Maker drives me and students crazy sometimes. It crashes a lot. You have to have the pictures all saved in the same place. You can't go from 
computer to computer, it just drives me crazy, even though it's a great free program. So I need a video to make quick and easy and a lot less stress on the, my students and myself. We'll just run it in Vacasa because it's pretty easy to do. You'll notice I'm now in my Movie Maker tab. It's loaded up all my pictures and video just in the order they were in the tray. Well, I don't really like this order, so I'm just going to pick up my pictures. I'm going to reorganize the pictures, and I'm going to put a couple pictures between the video. and put, put a, one of our group photos at the beginning, one group of photos at the end. So that's a pretty good order. I like that. Um, it brought in the whole video section. So if I want a clip of the video, this is a little tricky, I need to import just that movie into Movie Maker first and then trim it. And I have the ability to trim in here save it as a movie file, and then reload it with the rest of my files. You can't trim video clips in the movie file at the same time you're making the movie. That's, so that's one drawback, but that's not too bad. Let me set that out of the way here. Okay, <laughs> so um, I've got all my clips in here. Let's take a look at some of my options over at the left. I can add in an audio track. So I might select just some um, sample music that I have on my computer and bring it in. If you want to have an actual audio track from um, your voice, you would need to play the movie and record an audio track and then load that in. Although I expect to see that change pretty soon because a lot of people want to add their own voice. The cost updates all the time. We may see that in the next year or so with a add your own voice button. All right, I can do transition styles just like Movie Maker. The only difference is it applies them to all. I can't change my transition styles between each slide. I can decide how much of an overlap I want for those pictures and transitions to have, if I want to have captions on my pictures, um, lots of different things there. And then I go, oh, I forgot that one picture. Well, let me go to my clips, let me go get more, and let me just add on another one I got here. Perfect, that's a good one. So let me add that in, back to Movie Maker, and now I'm going to put that clip right at the beginning here behind my title page. Now, speaking about, and that's got my captions on, that's my caption to myself. Um, speaking of that, I think I'll go back here and take my captions off, because you don't need to see my little notes to myself. And let's talk a little bit about this title page. So if I click on the title page, uh, double click on it, then I've got some control of my title page as well. I like some funky, that's a good Google font right there. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that my um, guys can grab that. And then I don't need the date on there, uh, but let's uh, say uh, movie it up. Okay, so I've got a list, a lot of different choices here. I can change my uh, text colors, move it around. Again, not as much uh, happening as Movie Maker, but I've got a few different choices if I want to to mix up how it looks or how it's going to even animate itself in. So when I'm done, let's hit the Create Movie button and see how it turned out. Keep in mind I can preview it at any time down here, but we're going to be surprised. Now, if you didn't see it there, while this movie is crunching on the side here, there's also this Upload to YouTube button. YouTube is owned by Google, so it's great cooperation here. If you have a YouTube account, you can select the Upload to YouTube button, and it will um, log you into your account and upload it right into your YouTube account, all right out of Picasa. So it's really slick. You could also take a snapshot out of a video that you've created, or you could um, export a clip. And this is what I was talking about before, where you bring in one movie, and if you needed to trim it, you could export that clip, then to use it for the rest of your movie. It's actually bigger than I realized, so we have to hit the cancel button here and just preview it. <laughs> cancel the operation. I forgot how long those videos were. <clears throat> we pause for a second. So while that is saving, got at the 68% here, I'm just going to go ahead and go forward. And remember, this is online, so stop me at any time to try out these cool things, because I'm going fast, and you're going to want to take a little time to check them out. Let's take a look at some of the other um, buttons that we can use on this display here. It's almost done here. Um, <clears throat> you may not know it, but um, <clears throat> this has a, a blogging capability. So most districts, Blogger is blocked. Uh, it's blocked in my district, but I do have a personal Blogger account that um, if I wanted to add photos into my personal blog, I can just um, go right into uh, Picasso. 
up, and I can select the photos that I want. I can add them into my tray, hit blog this. It's going to load right into my blogger account for me to do a new blog. And so that's how I get, um, here's a, another example of um, the collage. And that's how I get photos up onto my blog real quick. I just do um, add to my blog, and it's up and in there, and I can blog about it right away. I don't have to upload one photo at a time. So that's a nice feature that is in the Picasa additional tools section at the bottom. Okay, so that movie is finally finished. <laughs> it was a bad selection of videos for me to choose. Um, so I want to show you that real quick. Um, I'll just show you a clip of it here. But here it is playing. We hear the music coming through. And my computer down over here. Um, you can see how the photos just come right through, wipe through. I can move it forward in time if I want to. So uh, this is a great way to um, highlight um, and make a quick review, let's say, for uh, parent night or for, uh, you know, to showcase a project that your kids did in class um, really quick, way quicker than Movie Maker. And, and then that automatic YouTube upload is such a delight to use and easy to use, too, if, especially if YouTube is unblocked in your district and just load it right up there, it goes right into your account. So it's really convenient. I spoke a second ago about that blogging button. Here it is right here. You just couldn't see it very well before. Again, you just select that uh, uh, information that you're looking for, put the pictures in your tray, select the blog button, and it loads them right into your blogger. So we've done collage, movie maker, blogger. Let's talk about some of these other ones here. The next one is geotag. I don't geotag a whole lot. Uh, it's just not something I, I do a whole lot with, but if you wanted to geotag, geotag works with Google Earth, and it allows you to, um, if you have to have Google Earth on your computer, and so um, mine's on here, but I think it needs an update, so I'm going to hit cancel on this, but it allows you to tag your uh, photos in Google Earth. And so they'll show up in Google Earth for other people to look at, and you can just bring them right in. So if you're a big Google Earther, this is a great way to get your <laughs> photos into Google Earth. Get out of here. Cancel. Let's get out of here and discard those changes. There we go. All right. So anyways, you can get those photos geotagged if you're interested in putting them up on Google Earth. Um, this would be a great uh, project for social studies. Uh, they could make a report with geotagged photos. Uh, it would be great for uh, history, art, um, English, if you wanted to, you know, a Shakespeare play and you could tag different places. You name it. You can geotag it. Okay, let's go to some of the other ones here. Email. Uh, I email a lot of pictures, especially to family members. And so maybe I've got some pictures of the kids or my class that I need to send to principal or parents or uh, anything like that. Uh, it's nice to hit this email button because I've got them in my tray. I can hit the email button. It will allow me to use the um, uh, application on my computer or my uh, Google Apps account. So um, we have uh, Outlook for our school email. If I was to select this button, it would load all the photos right into my Outlook as an attachment. Uh, I, I'm going to use my Gmail account for this one because I don't have Outlook at home. I can log it in and have it remember me. So I'm using my uh, dummy account that I use for school and training. I can preload my addresses and it'll uh, just load them right in. It'll remember any addresses that I've used before. It catches all the photos and sends them out. And I didn't have to select the photos one at a time through my email program to get them to attach. So that's a great uh, quick way to share. Printing. Let's talk about printing a little bit. If you uh, aren't so big about sharing pictures on a computer, but you just want to share them in your classroom on bulletin boards or in something you're sending home with parents, Cricoff has some great print options. It's, it's set up to print photos lots of different ways. So um, it has, of course, the full page. It has a lot of other choices, too, different sizes. You can also get more than one of the same photo. So I have it set here to, to do two. Um, you can add borders, text options. Um, it's just got a lot of different choices to get your photos printed. And so um, if you're looking for a great printing option, Picasso works wonderful for that. Um, the next one I want to talk about is one of my favorite ones, not so much for school, but for home. So I order my pictures online, and usually from Walmart.com, and I do it right through Picasso. So let's say these are the pictures. I want to get some actual hard copy, nice pictures in my hand. If I hit the shop button, it's going to bring up a 
slew of online photo shopping sites. Uh, it'll remember the one you use the most, but if you go through here, tons of choices, tons of international choices for things that are available all over the world. So I'm just going to choose uh, my Walmart account. It, you log in to your Walmart photo account, which is something you have to set up on Walmart. But once you log in, it's going to automatically load. You see them right here. It is loading my photos into my Walmart photo account right now. And then once I go on Walmart, boom, two clicks, and I got pictures coming to me in the mail or picking up. So again, it's no more loading them, finding them, searching for them. And it loads, loads them with the edits that I've made. Um, so that's a nice thing, too. It's, I've already made the edits here. It saves those edits as a different file, and it loads them with the edits. So I've got great pictures coming to me in the mail or picking up at the store. <clears throat> And then the last thing I'm going to show you today is the web albums. So what are web albums? Well, let's go back onto my Internet uh, <clears throat> Explorer here, or excuse me, Chrome. And I'm going to my web albums account. You get free online video and photo storage um, with any Google account. So I am logged in. I logged into my Google account. I'm using Google Plus, which is kind of new, but everyone should give it a try. That's the way that Google's going. So if you have an old Google account, yours might look a little bit different, might play a little bit different, but it's got the same features, a lot of the same features. So I'm on my free online storage. Here's some junk photos that we loaded up, some graffiti we had at our school, and some pictures of a path by our school. And um, <clears throat> this is free online storage. And it has great sharing options. So I can share just this, this photos with parents. And I can share, or probably not, that probably would be administrators, maybe just this photos with our nature club. Or I can make them public to everyone or just private to myself. So there's a lot of different choices. So here's how you get those pictures of yours up onto the internet. <clears throat> Again, I've selected the pictures that are in my tray. If you want to make sure you don't mess it up, pin them. Okay? Next thing I need to do is I need to select the upload button, okay? <clears throat> upload. It says, what Google account do you want to sign into? So I'm, again, going to sign into my dummy account, but you would sign into your Google account. And then it gives me some choices. It says, how do you want to um, upload these photographs? Um, do you want to put them in a new album? Uh, do you want to put them in a web album you've already got up there? Oops, kick me out here. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a new album. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this one my uh, Photos in the Classroom album. I can add a description if I like. I can decide what size I want to upload them. I like to upload them big so that people can see them in highest quality and they can download them easy in high quality. And then I choose my visibility. Who do I want to see this? Anyone with a link is convenient, especially for parents. You can just share the link and only those people will be able to see it. I'm in high school, so I do public on the web. Now, please be aware that for any type of photography, each district, each school, each state has different guidelines and rules about how and what you can post for kids online. Uh, in the high school in my district, parents have to opt out. They're automatically opted in. So we only have a couple students in the whole school who we can't share their photos and names with. But at the elementary level, I know in my district, if you want to share photos with kids, every parent has to opt in. And so you better make sure you have the right forms if you're going to put someone's child's photograph on the Internet. I think it's a great way to share stuff. It's the age that we're in. You just have to do it wisely. Make sure you educate your parents and your students on what's appropriate and what's not. So public on the web for me, if I wanted to share it with a particular person, I could right now. I'm going to upload those photos. Now, am I sure public? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to send them on up there. So I can tell I'm logged in up here, and I quickly I can go to that web album from this um, interface. I can see the past photo albums that I've loaded up or the one that's just getting loaded up right now. So here it comes. There's my Walmart. I'll close that one out. You can see that it's loaded in there. Here comes my photos in the classroom. It takes a second to load those up, but then they'll be available. It's from this interface that I take photos into my um, classroom and share them. So here I have um, some photos of my biology class and some photos of my anatomy class in a slideshow format, which I'll go over more when I do a training on Google Sites later this year. But here's the great thing. I told you earlier that I like to take photos of my kids in lab. So what if 
I load the sonatas up with that, and I put them in the same album every time, like an album called Biology. And then I just come up to the top here, and I hit Sync to the Web. What this does is from now on, any photos I add to this album, so let's add one in, let's add in something that's obviously shouldn't be in there, like a Christmas photo. Here we go, Santa Claus, perfect. And let's add this Santa Claus photo into my Google training. I'm just going to, uh, excuse me, not my Google training, my uh, album's on the web. i got to find it where I'm at. Let me pause for a second. I got yeah, just just me a second. So into my album, there's my photos in the classroom. So I'm just going to drag and drop this in there. Okay, and you see I went to six photos. I now have got uh, Santa in here. Notice I'm not going to hit this upload button. Let's go back onto the computer. Let's go to my web albums. And let's refresh this real quick. And that Santa photograph is going to show up in here momentarily, automatically. I didn't have to do anything to get it up here, so it'll come in a second. And then if I have my web page pulling from that album, those pictures will automatically show up in my slideshow. So kids are cleaning up. In about one minute, I load photos into the Casa, throw them into my album that is synced onto the web, and then the kids can also come into my room as their pictures are playing live on my website. It is not content on your website that brings people back. It's pictures. People do not come back to your website to reread your syllabus. I'm sorry. But they will come back to see the pictures from the lab that day, to share with their parents what they did in class that day. It was a great way to drive hits to your site so that not only while they're there, they're seeing the pictures, but they're also reading the new things that you have going on in your class or at your school. So uh, if you can figure out the web albums, it's not that hard. Let me refresh this page again. It should be coming up here in a second. Come on, Santa. There he is. Um, so automatically in. And if this was slideshow to a website, automatically now included in the slideshow. Really slick. Um, anyways, if you can uh, go through those steps, I make it sound pretty easy. It's a, it's a little bit harder than that, but not much. You can get those things added in pretty well. So I use um, those web albums for lots of things in my class, from labs to slideshows to uh, showcasing things that are happening in the classroom to parent night, you name it. The CASA is just an outstanding free program, and I hope you uh, take the time to really mess around with it. And remember, you're not going to mess up your photos. Just garble them up. You're just saving the changes that you made with Picasa. And and then take that next step when you're ready and investigate that upload, those web albums, and that's what's going to branch out the photos that you take in your class and really make them a powerful tool that you can use in your classroom. I'm Lauren Nickerson for the Aura VSD. Thank you for joining us for our training. Please uh, look for emails or future training dates. And if you're interested in taking a training live, or um, watching a training that has been completed, remember head over to my site, uh, bit.ly backslash nickll. Go to the um, Aura VSD section here, and you can um, see what photo, what trainings are coming up in the future on the calendar for all of the Aura VSD trainers. Take a look at the handout again. I'm putting that video link up here in two seconds. And then, of course, you just completed your training, so please, Print your uh, PDU um, certificate, and if you would, also please leave me some feedback so that we can continue to make these trainings better. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.